In this video, we will resume what we started five years ago. We will start finishing out the last of the Arcade ROM hacking series. In this case, altering the checksums and altering the code such that when you modify Arcade ROMs, the code that tests to see if it, the ROM is, is okay will actually check against your ROM code, your code rather than the original code. A long time ago, about five years ago, I made a series of videos um, hacking arcade ROMs, and I never made the last episode. Uh, I got to lesson seven, part one, bypassing checksums, where I was showed you how to bypass a checksum so that when it um, when you know you change your ROMs, the system did just crash and say, "Eh, checksum failure." Um, but I never actually fixed the checksums so that the code would actually verify the checksums are correct with your new code. And over the years, people have asked me to finish that and make that video, and I think it's time to do that. I might actually have to make two videos for this because in the last five years since we made this, we have some new tools available to us, tools that will greatly make our lives easier, specifically Ghidra. Ghidra is a reverse engineering tool, decom um, disassembler, and decompiler that will seriously, serious. once you learn how to use it, um, speed up your, your process. I mean, literally, when I did this hack, it was the first hack I ever did, the Akari Warriors hack. This was probably 10 years ago, maybe more. Um, I think it took me like literally probably about 48 hours. And my wife was on vacation. I went on, um, on a Friday night, I came home and I basically worked with very little sleep till Sunday. And had I actually had Ghidra, and all I had was main debugger at the time, but had I had Ghidra, it would have taken me a fraction of the time, literally maybe an hour or two, or, well, this is my first tag, I think, so it's probably a little more than that, but a fraction of the time it would have taken. And now I remember actually a couple of years ago, I used uh, Ida to do an I arcade ROM. And Ida is like Ghidra but it's expensive and you know something that would have taken me probably you know again 48 hours I think I had done it in less than an hour Ghidra is so powerful and you're gonna to want to learn to use it I have videos on using Ghidra if you haven't you should probably watch my intro video on just getting it set up and comfortable with it or watch anyone's video there's probably a billion Ghidra videos out there now anyway uh, so we're gonna do this in Ghidra and um, so, you know, this first episode here, or the second episode, Lesson 7, Part 2, five years later, I'll probably just show you how to get things set up in Ghidra and start poking around from where we left off in the last one. So, let's do it. So, what do we need? Well, we need to know a little bit about um, the ROMs. Um, and the easiest way to find out, we need to, we need to learn, know what processor the game Akari Warriors runs on. We need to know the Akari Warriors uh, ROM layout, and we need to get the, ROM, the ROMs themselves. So the easiest way to find the data from um, is from MAME. So I'm going to go into my MAME directory, and I'm just going to type MAME64 list XML, the name of the game, Akari, and I'm just going to, oops, Akari, and then I'm just going to write it to Akari.xml. Okay, that's going to dump a bunch of information. And now I use the program write, or, or, um, which is, I think, WordPad, actually, Akari.xml. And I'm going to go down and down and down, and I'm going to find out the ROM layout. I need to know that. So here we go. We want to find the ROM layout for the region of main CPU. And there's only one. Sometimes we'll have multiple ROMs in there. Um, Akari Warriors, the, the JAMA version, which is the um, Akari um, ROM, uh, there's one called Akari A, and that's actually an older version of Akari that is uses um, a non-JAMA version. There's actually two ROMs in that. But with the, the, the this one, we have oops, only one ROM in the main CPU section, okay? And it's loaded at offset zero. It's important to know. You need to know it's offset zero. You need to know the ROM is, and it helps with the size. So since we only have one ROM, the size doesn't really matter. Now we also need to know um, what type of CPU this uses. We scroll down more, we're going to find a machine section. I'm just going to see if I can search machine. There we go. Machine, machine name, 
Z80, okay? So uh, it uses a Z80. We know it uses a Z80. We know the ROM name is, what was the ROM name? 1.ROM, I think. 1.ROM starts at offset zero. You need to know those things, all right? Good, got that, done. So now let's fire up Ghidra. If you don't have Ghidra, get it. Um, watch one of my videos, or again, anyone's videos on the internet. I'm installing Ghidra. I have a, I have a very simple one on just installing it. Um, if you if you really need just a complete walkthrough. So all right, so with Ghidra, new project. It's a non-shared project. And... Uh, we're in. Um, it's gonna ask you for project directory. User, uh, it's in my, you know, my home directory, Gita directory. We're gonna actually create one. It's we don't want to put in the Mega Touch directory, not Mega Touch in 2014. We're gonna do. Um, we're gonna call it Kari, Kari, checksum, bypass. That's gonna be the name. Second, select that as a project directory, and then just give the project itself a name. I'm gonna name it the same as the directory. Kari checksum, bypass. Okay. And so that's going to create a directory called the Chari Checksum Bypass. And in that directory will be a Ghidra file, a GPR file called the Chari Checksum Bypass. Anyway, you don't need to know that. All you need to know is now we got to load the ROMs. So you click on a Chari Checksum Bypass and we hit I for import. Okay. And um, I already just loaded this to make sure I had the loading process correct. But you're going to have to find it where the ROMs are in your file system. In my, in my case, it's in a car, uh, my, my, my home directory, desktop, Akari. And the ROM we want is a ROM1. So click ROM1. And now it's going to ask you some things. Um, Ghidra, generally, if you give it a file, it detects what operating system, what CPU, blah, blah, blah. And you don't have to really fill out anything. But because we're just giving it raw data, we have to tell it it's a raw binary. Ghidra figured that out. And then it's going to ask the language. And that's, that's, a, that's a poor choice of words. It should be called the architecture because it's actually asking us what type of CPU it is. Since it's just a raw binary. This it, Ghidra has no idea of knowing what type of computer this runs on or what type of CPU. So that's why we need to know that it's a Z80. So um, we looked that up, right? When we were going through the main XML or the carry XML file. Program name 1.rom is fine and OK. Okay. So we click that, click OK. And now we're, we're just sitting here. Um, we have to actually click on that file, the 1.rom. Okay. It says one.rom .rom has not been analyzed yet. Would you like to analyze it now? We're going to choose yes. You just choose analyze. Don't worry about any of the options. And down here you'll see Ghidra's working. It's figuring stuff out. So we're going to have to let it figure some stuff out. It, it might take a few minutes. Depending on how big your file is, it could take a very long time. Um, but this will only take a few minutes. And there it's done. Okay. So here we have the disassembly window. This is actually what you would see in the main disassembler, um, kind of. Um, you see the instructions and address the instructions. It looks a little different, it's actually giving us a lot more information. And then we have over here the function graph. Actually, I think that normally wasn't loaded, so I'm going to go ahead and load it for you. Window function graph. Okay. And um, we're going to click on over here in the listing window, RAM address 0000. It's actually ROM, but it doesn't matter. The system thinks it's RAM. I don't, that doesn't hurt us either way. Okay, or Ghidra thinks it's RAM. It's actually not RAM, it's ROM, but it doesn't matter. So now we see something that you would never see in the main debugger. You see this flowchart, which actually lets you see how the code is flowing. So this address here is the beginning of the code, um, zero. And it's you can see what it's doing here. It's setting up a stack load stack pointer in this address, and uh, then it's going to disable the interrupts, and it's going to jump to this code, okay, right here, and it's going to do stuff. So this is actually, and you can see this. This is why one of the reasons Ghidra is amazing because you can actually see the layout of the code. Code you can see loops and things like that, which we will see in a bit. All right, so. Um, 
there you go. You're, uh, you're loaded up with Ghidra. You got the Kari loaded, um, Warriors ROM loaded. What we're going to do here is now we're just going to save the file. You might, might make sure you save the file. And, um, and then the next episode, let's start. We'll, we'll, we'll actually probably review the, the video part one, uh, episode seven, part one, to see where we left off because we don't want to go through this whole process of, of analyzing the ROM. Uh, I already did that in. Uh, before, so we'll see where we left off and then use Ghidra to figure out the rest and make it really easy for us. All right, that's it for today. Uh, I'll see you guys next episode.